In this problem, we're going to prove that this function is continuous at x equals zero. So in order to do that, we're going to use the definition of continuity. So recall that we say a function is continuous. So f is continuous. I'll just say cont at x equals c if for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some number delta greater than zero, such that for all x in the set of real numbers with the following condition, the distance between x and c is less than delta. In other words, x is close to c. Then f of x is close to f of c. This basically says for every epsilon greater than zero, so this upside down a means for all, this backwards e means there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for every real number x with this condition here, then this condition has to be satisfied. The absolute value of x minus c is the distance between x and c, so we're saying here that it's small. So whenever this distance is less than delta, the distance between f of x and f of c is also small. How small? As small as you like, right? Because it holds for all epsilon. Okay, so in this problem here, our c is going to be zero. So before we do this problem, which shouldn't be too difficult, um, let's go ahead and figure it out. So this is the scratch work. This is not the proof. So let's just kind of work through this and see what we can come up with. So we're gonna have an epsilon greater than zero, and we're going to need to find a delta greater than zero that satisfies this condition. So we get to use this. We have x minus zero less than delta. In other words, the absolute value of x is less than delta. And that somehow needs to imply that f of x minus f of zero, right, because c is zero, should be, this should be less than epsilon. The goal is to do a series of steps and show that this is less than epsilon. So here, f of x minus f of zero, we know something about f of zero. According to the definition of f, whenever you plug in zero for x, you're going to get zero. So this is f of x minus zero. So f of x is this function here, right? If x is not zero, it's this. So we use this function here, x squared sine of one over x. And we know that we can break it up as follows, right? Properties of absolute value. And further, we know that um, the absolute value of sine is less than or equal to one, right? So this is going to be always true for all x. So this is less than or equal to the absolute value of x squared times one. And this is just x squared, right? Because we can drop uh, the absolute value because it's already positive. And then um, we want this to be less than epsilon. This will be true if x is less than the square root of epsilon. If we can get this satisfied, all of this should work. Well, we certainly can, right? Because we have this assumption. So what we'll do is we're gonna take delta to be equal to the square root of epsilon. Okay, now let's go ahead and write the proof, but hopefully you see how I figured it out and how I made sense of it. Basically, you just write down the definition and you try to make it work. You say, okay, I have this and I need to show this. And then you just like go through it and hope it works. <laughs> so uh, sometimes it's a little bit harder. This is a pretty easy example. So proof. So we'll start our proof uh, by letting epsilon be greater than zero, right? Because that's, that's how the definition starts. We'll start by saying let epsilon be greater than zero. It could be any epsilon. So what we're showing will hold for all epsilon. You could say, you know, let epsilon greater than zero be arbitrary, but it's kind of understood that it's just some epsilon we're not really specifying what it is. So in theory, it could be any epsilon. Now we need to find a delta, which we've done in our scratch work. So we'll say choose 
delta equals the square root of epsilon and this is where it seems mysterious like if you if you don't see the scratch work like if you can't see how to figure it out and you just look at the proof it's it's not going to make sense you say well where does this come from it comes out of thin air <laughs> so it doesn't right it doesn't come out of thin air this is this is how you come up with it and then for all x and r with this condition so i'll go ahead and write that down so then for all x in the set of real numbers that's what the little e means with and we have the absolute value of x minus c so x minus zero less than delta we have and so now we're basically going to retrace our steps so we have f of x minus f of zero that's equal to x squared sine of 1 over x minus and we know f of 0 is 0 again that was by the definition of f right that's how it was actually defined okay and this is equal to the absolute value of x squared times the sine of 1 over x and again we can break this up into two pieces like this you know you could skip some steps here um you know you, you could have probably just skipped to this here absolute value of x squared like that because you know this is going to be one so i'll just put times one and then this is the absolute value of x oh actually we can drop the absolute value here right we can drop it here we don't need it right and then because uh this is less than delta this really means the absolute value of x is less than delta right so this is less than delta squared okay but but uh, delta is the square root of epsilon so this is equal to the square root of epsilon squared and that's equal to epsilon and so that completes the proof so just like a box with an x or something to finish some people use qed etc but that's it, right? So you take the strongest inequality here. So you have a series of equalities and inequalities. So really, just to reiterate, what we've shown is we've shown that this, this is not part of the proof, just doing this on the side, is less than epsilon. So you could add that to the proof and then say, therefore, you know, it's continuous. But uh, it's pretty clear from here that you take the strongest one and you're done. So that's it. I hope this video has been helpful.